and we're still waiting. I thank the member for a contribution. The question is that the document be noted. I call the member for Dunkley. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Um, and I'm pleased uh, to rise to take note um, of this substantial report and the recommendations in it. Um, and I want to join with my colleagues in thanking all of the members who were part of this inquiry and all of the stakeholders um, who joined um, in to the inquiry and made submissions. Um, because as we all know, you know, this is a $15 billion industry in Australia. Um, and um, we produce some 76 million tonnes of waste per annum. Um, I was not on this inquiry, um, but I want to speak on this report um, as part of urging this government and all governments to really put sustainability at the heart um, of all that we do. Sustainability for our environment, sustainability for our economic growth, sustainability for the well-being um, and happiness of our people. And really, um, this report and the push from the people of Australia for a circular economy is about sustainability. Um, I too, um, like my colleague who spoke before me, um, am hoping that the Prime Minister fulfils his commitment that he made at the Plastics uh, Summit earlier this year about guidelines for government procurement policy and recycling. Um, it's important that governments not just talk the talk, but also are leaders. Um, and what governments ask other um, organisations, ask industry to do, governments should also be doing. Um, and it is a very, very powerful tool that the Commonwealth has in front of them, um, at its disposal, procurement policy. Procuring not just Australian-made goods, procuring not just um, actions and activities by Australian companies and Australian workers, but using procurement policy to set the standards of the sort of materials that we want to use. Um, in my electorate of Dunkley, um, Replas, which I've spoken about before in this place, is um, a world leader in recycling of plastics. And they have recently entered into a contract with Frankston City Council and are providing footpath concrete where the aggregate is recycled plastic. Uh, and it is terrific. We are now able and we, well, we will be able soon in Seaford to walk on recycled plastic. They have arrangements with the big retailers, um, including Coles, to take the plastic bags um, and the plastic waste and they change it into benches and guardrails and boardwalks. All sorts of items are manufactured with recycled plastic. And for companies like Replast to continue to grow and to continue to provide those goods, there needs to be demand. And this federal government, as well as state governments and local councils, have at their disposal tools to increase that demand by saying, when projects are built using Commonwealth funds, we want to have recycled materials like those that are made by Replas as part of those projects. Um, it, is, it is disturbing um, that the recent ABS waste survey identified um, that we have in this country gone from producing 68 million tonnes of waste annually to 76 million tonnes. It's a 13 per cent increase. We're supposed to be going down and we're going up. We need um, to meet the targets that have been set um, for us in this country as part of building that sustainable future. We only recycle 58% of waste. We have a target of 80% by 2030. Much to the surprise of most of us, that's coming very soon, 2030. You know, it's 10 years away. We set targets, we need to meet them. 
Um, a bit like with climate change, we really need to set targets like net zero emissions by 2050, and we need to meet them. Um, so as with the plastic summit, um, earlier this year, it's all well and good to have announcements and to have forums and to do media events that has to translate into real action. And the work that was done on this report um, needs to be taken into account by the government to deliver real action, not just photo opportunities. Um, I'd just like to finish my contribution by mentioning a company in Australia that contacted me after the last time I spoke about waste um, called the Plastic Circle. Um, Trish and Murray Hyde contacted me um, because this is their world and their life, sustainability and the circular economy. And they are an example of um, Australians who are committed to this idea of sustainability, but also an example of industry and individuals are ahead of the government in this country and are crying out for the government to be there and back them in. Now, uh, the Plastic Circle provided me um, with some statistics that are really very interesting when we think about how we can promote um, companies and individuals and governments to get involved in developing and building our circular economy. 46% of plastic waste globally is caused by plastic packaging. 30% of that is recycled, but 80% of businesses lack the metrics to understand and manage their plastic impacts. However, 23% of consumers already buy based on sustainability attributes. 81% of consumers have said that they will buy more economically friendly products over the next five years, and 73% of employees want their company to demonstrate ESG leadership. And businesses who have embedded environmental standards see a 16% productivity lift. As the Plastic Circle says to their clients, you have a double imperative. You need to achieve your sales targets and also your ESG commitment. And there's no reason why a federal government shouldn't have embedded in everything they do that same mindset of ESG commitments and sustainability and the well-being of the people and the planet and the economy that we are all part of. So Trish and Murray Hyde and the people that work with them are scientists, they're advisors, they're collaborators, they're creatives, they're entrepreneurs and they're innovators. A circular economy provides opportunities for jobs um, and for economic growth for people with a whole range of different skill sets and education and interests and abilities. It is good for the economy, it is good for jobs, it is good for the environment and it is good for the well-being um, of those of us who live on this precious planet um, because it improves our day-to-day -day amenity. We do not want to have a future where our oceans are clogged with plastic and our waterways are strewn with bottles. We want to have a future where our grandchildren's grandchildren can sit on Frankston Beach and enjoy the wonder and the beauty of the nat natural environment without having waste washing up all around them. Thank you. I thank the member for that contribution. Uh, the question is that the document be 